capabilities have never been static. Throughout our history, we have sought to augment ourselves with all sorts of technologies, ranging from levers that allow us to move more weight than our muscles alone can manage, to the creation of systems of education, philosophy, psychology and pharmacology that allow us to do more with our brains. In recent years, technology has overturned norms and reshaped the contours of our lives and societies at a rate we've never seen before. We're now forging paths into areas that were science fiction just 20 years ago. Nanotechnology, mind-machine interfaces, quantum computing, artificial intelligence. These incredible advances are coming at us so fast that it's hard to even imagine the frontiers we'll be pushing up against in another 20 years. The potential for the augmentation and enhancement on, of the human brain made possible by today's technological advances goes far beyond anything that we have seen before. The integration of the brain with the physical and digital environments will forge new neuroevolutionary pathways and offer alternative routes to increased productivity and efficiency along with improved health and well-being. My company, Emotive, has developed a range of portable brainware technologies that can be used to empower human performance. At the core of what we do is the ability to measure and translate brain activity as it is transmitted through the surface of the scalp. This technology, electroencephalography, or EEG, is not new and has been used in laboratory research for decades. In the past, these systems cost tens of thousands of dollars, required specialized technicians an hour or so to fit, and left the wearer strapped to a recording system and largely immobile. Today, we have developed versions that can be fitted within minutes, that are wireless and light, and that cost just hundreds of dollars. The ability to read brain activity can now be carried into the home or workplace just as easily as we would carry a smartphone. These advances allow us to take high-end neuroscientific research out of the walled garden of the laboratory and into the real world. The ability to collect contextual and longitudinal data on an individual's brain provides us with an immensely valuable resource for unlocking its full potential. The human brain is a dynamic system that has the ability to continually rewire and reprogram itself according to how it is used. Activities that are frequently repeated will be reinforced by the formation of additional neural pathways to support that activity. This neuroplasticity can have both positive and negative effects. Negative thought patterns and emotions will be reinforced by additional neural pathways if they are frequently repeated, but the flip side is that we can train our brains to support positive activities by identifying valuable thought patterns and consciously seeking to repeat them. The key to avoiding the destructive patterns and replacing them with positive mental states is being able to identify each when they occur so that we can modify our behavior and the way we think. Neurotechnology can allow us to do this in a precise and empirically grounded manner. For example, stress is one of the key healthcare challenges that defines the modern world. As more and more routine work is handed over to machines, the human workload involves tasks that require higher and higher levels of cognitive effort. This, in combination with our hyper-connected, always-on environment, means that our brains are running faster and hotter than ever before. And that's taking a toll. The World Health Organization has described stress as the health epidemic of the 21st century with the economic impact approaching an enormous $300 billion a year in the US alone. If we want to make our workplaces sustainable, we need to create environments that are compatible with brain health. 
The cost of inaction is increasing rates of burnout, inefficiency, and ultimately, unhappy and unhealthy individuals. Brainware can help us respond to this challenge. By giving individuals the ability to monitor their stress and attention levels accurately and in real time, we can empower ourselves to optimize our time, reduce cognitive overload, and most importantly, manage our own neurological well-being. The same strategies that we can use to manage our stress can also enhance our ability to learn new skills and retain new information. By monitoring when our attention is most focused and providing automatic feedback in response to signs of stress or fatigue, we can tailor the whole learning experience to the individual. Learning plays an important part in each and everyone's working life. We all prefer different ways of learning. Some of us prefer reading, some learn better from video, and our own circumstances mean we face challenges on when and where we can learn. So what if we could understand your emotional and cognitive state while you're learning? Emotive and SAP are working to make it a reality and adapt your experience in real time. We can detect precisely when you've lost focus, when you are stressed, and what type of learning support you need in that specific moment by understanding the learning material that works best for you and by understanding your environment to provide an experience that continuously adapts to meet your emotional and cognitive state. Combining the best-in-class learning platform from SAP and cutting-edge neurotechnology from Emotive, we are shaping a vision to revolutionize workplace learning. Join us in shaping the future of learning. This only scratches the surface of what will be possible. Mobile Brainware also has the potential to open up new frontiers in neuroscience by helping us gather massive data sets about how our brains work in the wild. We can study and model valuable patterns of thinking and gain new insights into how our brains fit into the wider ecology of human life and society. The more we understand about how our brains interacts with the external environment, the better we are able to fine-tune the broader system to work with rather than against our brains. The ability to translate thought directly into action is one of the most exciting new frontiers opened up by neurotechnology. We can use our thoughts to control a computer or even influence processes and machinery on the factory floor. I'm controlling this robot with the power of my mind. I'm going to think down, up, and open. Imagine the possibilities of this on an industrial scale. We are using this mind control technology in some factories that are investing a lot in R&D to change the way the operators interact with the machines. And instead of using their hands, they're starting to use their brains. Altran has been developing an innovative technology around my control tech because we see several benefits in an industrial setting. Increasing safety, ability to monitor and guide a robot remotely, and most importantly, increasing productivity of workers in an assembly line. In a workplace context, the possibility of plugging into our environments offers the potential for efficiency gains in productivity and enhanced safety. But things get really interesting when we start to think about where these tech developments might lead us in the future. As the world becomes increasingly connected and as the Internet of Things develops, more of our immediate environment will be open to this sort of hands-free manipulation. We can potentially harness the impulses in our brains to control any digitally connected object. Today, we can use this technology to turn on the lights, move a cursor on a computer screen, or even fly a drone. But these examples are simply the case of bolting this new technology onto pre-existing environments. Efficiency gains will really begin to scale in a dramatic way when we start to design our environments with these capabilities in mind. Both the control and feedback features 
of this technology offer us exciting new ways for improving human capabilities. But the true potential for reaching peak human performance lies in combining both feedback and control into a single seamless loop. We can already study how lighting levels, temperature and background noise affect efficiency and use those results to optimise our environment. We can examine the effects that colour schemes, different types of music or the frequency of coffee breaks have on attention levels. We can even study how humans respond to different social stimuli in order to discover which stimuli has greater motivational effects. There is no environmental or interactive factor that we can't engage with and learn from. But if we take a longer-term view, the possibilities move us into another world of capability. Fully developed, smart, adaptive environments will allow you to manipulate the world without even being conscious of it. By linking brain activity to preset commands, we can build environments that will automatically adapt themselves to changes in the brain, creating dynamically optimised environments or workplaces that are instantly responsive to individual needs. A lapse in concentration could be countered by adjusting the temperature or lighting levels to a setting more suitable for sustaining attention. Or your music playlist could adapt to declining attention by replacing that gentle violin concerto with your favourite rock tune. Or if your brainware detects that you are fatigued, it could send a command to brew the coffee pot, or a message to your phone reminding you to take a short walk and stretch your legs. In effect, you become integrated with your environment, and your environment becomes an extension of your brain. This sort of integration is the first step towards what is known as humanistic intelligence. As the portable processing power of neurotechnologies increases, and as more sophisticated machine learning algorithms are developed, the feedback between mind and machines will become smoother and more sympathetic. Eventually, we will reach a point at which an intelligent machine will be able to learn from its wearer and automatically feed data back to the human brain in order to assist it in its activities. The system could respond to your decision to make a complex journey with a map and an optimised route. Or a desire to know more about a particular topic could prompt your companion AI to retrieve all the relevant data from the web analyse it and present it back to you in a condensed and easily digestible form. The processing power of your wearable computer essentially becomes integrated with your own thoughts. Such capabilities may not be here just yet, but they are fast approaching, and the trajectory is clear. The fundamental technologies are already in place, and it's only a matter of time before portable processing power, machine learning, and neurotechnologies are sufficiently developed and integrated enough to make this a reality. We are now on the cusp of a new frontier in human endeavour. By making sure that personal well-being, autonomy and happiness are our guiding principles, we can empower individuals to reach their cognitive potential, maximise human health, and even overcome limits that we once took for granted. I'd like to close with a final video of Rodrigo Huber Mendez. 28 years ago, Rodrigo was the victim of a carjacking incident in Brazil that left him paralysed from the neck down. Thanks to this technology, Rodrigo became the first person in the world to drive a Formula One car using only the power of his mind. Last month, I, I went to this, to this speedway in Brazil and I had this opportunity to, to drive a race car using my mind. The car, it doesn't have, it doesn't have pedals, it doesn't have a, a, a steering wheel, it doesn't have anything. It's just him and his mind driving it forward. It, blew my mind. It was very challenging to really concentrate and, and to, to feel that I, I was controlling the car. The team leader came to me and, and asked me 
Are you okay, Rodrigo? Can we start? Suddenly it was me, the car and the, and the track. I gave the, the first command, which was to accelerate, and the car started running. It was unbelievable. I grew up loving Star Wars, so the idea of just moving an object with my mind is already the stuff of science fiction and the stuff of fantasy. That alone is cool. But driving a Formula One car, it takes it up to another level. Thank you, Tan Lee. Thanks to you, I am the first person in the planet uh, that has d uh, driven a Formula One car using thought. Thank you very much.